NYPD is hoping a $10,000 reward will help them track down the suspects involved in the shooting in Queens over the weekend that injured 10 people. That's right. Officers continue to patrol the streets of Corona to prevent any retaliatory attacks. This has a crackdown on gang activity that leads to eight suspects arrested in the Bronx in Manhattan. Joining us live in the studio is NYPD Commissioner Dermot Shea. So good to see you in person. Thank right. you for being here, Commissioner. Uh, Dan, Betty, it's great to be here. So, Commissioner, before we get to some of those issues of the day in terms of crime, I want to get to the big story of the morning, and that is the findings from the Attorney General, of course, into Governor Andrew Cuomo. The district attorney in Albany has now said they are investigating possible criminal behavior here. Are there any open investigations against the governor here in New York City? There are not. And, and have the police reports been filed? There have been none. I mean, we watched those new, the news yesterday, as everyone did. I saw the attorney general's remarks. Um, but beyond that, you know, that's our involvement. Okay. Thank All you. right. So let's get to the violence right now. We've seen this ongoing violence, right? There's yep. been seems like there's even been an uptick. Last weekend was horrific with as many people that shot that were. Are you um, trying to? I obviously curb this, but what are you doing? Could we possibly see the gang unit come back because of this? So we're, we're doing an awful lot. Uh, first, uh, one shooting is too many. As you said, that was a terrible yeah. uh, incident last weekend. We had a tough weekend last yeah. weekend. But June and July is two months in a row that we, we strung together where we're knocking the violence down from last year. And, and we're not satisfied, Betty. Mm -hmm. Far from it. We have a lot more work to do. But when you look at the momentum, and that's how I, I kind of look at this, the gun arrests are coming through. Mm -hmm. The resources are coming back. The work is being put in. Um, with the long-term grand juries and these gang investigations, we were up in the Bronx announcing another takedown yesterday. You may hear another news story before the end of the week of another takedown in New York City. Mm -hmm. So those takedowns and the work is really going in, and it's going to have a significant impact. Now, we need help beyond that. Right. We need some yeah. of these policies and, you know, gun prosecutions to come. We have, we finished last year with the most gun arrests in New York City, you'd have to go back 25 years. Mm. This year, we're up 44% mm -hmm. on that. Staggering numbers. So yeah. Yeah. it's it's the work is there. We, we need that backlog. We need people to have consequences. But what about the gang unit? Do you think that might be coming we, back? We, we have more individuals right now investing gangs and guns than we ever had. Okay. And that's that's where you see those those numbers come from. So between hi historical cases, mm -hmm. the gun violence unit, the intelligence units and the commands, the public safety teams, we 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 are focused on um, guns, we're focused on violence, and that's why you see this in, work coming to a positive head. In that specific shooting that we saw over the weekend, I mean, it was alarming because that is considered a mass shooting, right, with mm -hmm. so many people injured yep. here. Are there any eyewitnesses that are coming forward talking about this? How close are you to make an arrest in this specific uh, case? Are you worried yeah. that there would be retaliatory attacks? Well, we always are. We made a gun arrest uh, not far from there yesterday with the deployment that we have. Mm -hmm. um, so what I, what I will tell you, with, without giving too much details, I apologize, is that I was briefed every day since. Mm -hmm. I was briefed as recently as last night by Chief Detective Jimmy Essek. Mm -hmm. They're making steady progress on that case. I don't think anyone in New York City really doubts that the New York City detectives will find and right. apprehend and hold the people accountable for that incident. All right. Well, on Monday, Brooklyn District Attorney uh, Eric Gonzalez released documents that really highlighted police misconduct. Those documents uh, really show a lack of disciplinary action. What is being done since yeah. learning of that? Yeah. Um, you know, I have a great working relationship with Eric. We've known each other for a long time. I, I think the more, uh, honestly, and, and I'll, get, I'll get it from both sides on yeah. this, but the more information you put out, I think, is the better. I think people need to have trust in their police department. Department. And I think that when you start putting information out, it's got to be done responsibly. Um, and I haven't seen exactly what he put out. But when you put information out, what you are going to learn, I believe, is that the men and women of this police department are the best in the nation. The work they do is phenomenal. That's why last year we put so much effort into um, our discipline matrix and putting our own dashboard out with, with here is here is the discipline history of our offices. They so, do have discipline histories. They do have lawsuits. They do they have been held. But when you look at the whole body of work, you see amazing work. You see only a fraction have some of these negative stories. Right. And and, and I think that's a part of the story and, that needs to be told. Commissioner, I think when you look at some of the individual cases, right, and people are wondering what takes so long to get to disciplinary action. And I want to just highlight one right now. There's sure. this video making rounds on social media. I'm sure you've seen it of Sergeant John Zarilla. He's assigned to the Transit Bureau, and he can be seen using excessive force with several people. Now, that same officer, to my understanding, has a history of complaints against him. 
Have you seen that video and what is the action yeah. being taken? Here's the video, Here's the video, right, the video now. right now on the screen. Yep. And so I'm not sure if you've seen this prior to right now. I, I've seen this I've seen this video for about forty minutes. It's a two hour video. Okay, mm -hmm. so but this officer has a history here. Should he have be placed on modified duty? What action are you L taking? Let me so our entire Lafayette Bureau is reviewing this incident mm -hmm. and no one should draw any inclinations. That's for transparency purposes. I watched this video and it's about two hours in length. Mm -hmm. I watched about forty minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, I had to at some yeah. point stop. It's down at Delancey and Essex, I believe, yep. and you see a team of transit officers stopping too many people that are just jumping the turnstile. You see people paying the yep. fare, you see too many that are high right over the turnstile. 99% of the people stopped, come to the side, they're joking with the officers, they receive a summons, they leave. Two of the time that I watched didn't follow that pattern. One was, there was no physical contact, but it was just abhorrent offensive language, racist behavior, in my opinion, towards the officers, but that was really the end but of it. But that's no excuse no. for the action. This particular one, she put, when she stops, she's pulled to the side and she attempts to push past the officers. Then you see what you just saw. Mm -hmm. um, then she's sat down, she's handcuffed, she's eventually stood up. They, they explained to her very calmly and very politely, you can't do that, you have to receive a summons for what you did. Mm -hmm. um, the cuffs are taken off. She again gets loud and boisterous and warnings are given. So this went on for probably about 20 minutes. Um, and that is what is under review there. But that one piece of what you see is not what happened. Right. And, and people have to, we cannot have officers, if you think back a month or two ago, we need more cops in transit. Yeah. We, transit is out of control was the, right. wasn't But you're not saying you true. condone that, or do you? It's not condoning it, but when we stop people for, uh, fair evasion or other things and we have to hold an investigation at the scene we can't let them just walk away we've also seen where people have weapons and other things so the, the message here is comply mm -hmm. you you saw and you see it on the video multiple multiple people of every race creed age be stopped receive a summons they weren't even searched mm -hmm. and, and compliance just led to a, a, an interaction that was fine commissioner we are uh, simply out of time here I want to get your take real quick on mask mandates and vaccine mm -hmm. proof when you enter a business right now in the beginning of COVID it kind of fell into the NYPD on mask compliance yeah. here and how to enforce it have there been talks about who will enforce vaccination proof if somebody There's comes into a no place? talks with the NYPD that we would be involved in that and do you think you should be if, I if, do not so if somebody walks into a business without their yep. vaccine proof yep. and says, uh, who should, the, I'm going to call the NYPD because I don't want that person in my establishment. Those, those talks will, will take place, I'm sure, before this policy mm -hmm. is put in, into place. It would be my desire that we are not part of that. I was going to say, that's going to be a bit of an overload, or would it, on your department if you're having to? Well, it, well, it certainly right. would. We, we have a lot of balls. I mean, we'll do whatever we have to do, mm -hmm. obviously. I think we have a history of that. But uh, I think there's probably better ways to handle that than have the NYPD doing it. And then lastly, on vaccine um, compliance within the department mm -hmm. right now, there's been this push right now to get city workers yep. vaccinated. What are the numbers right now within the NYPD, and do you want to see it higher? I want to see it 100 yeah. percent. I mean, that's I yeah. want to see it 100 percent. It, it's probably too low. Um, the last um, we hover between 43, 45, I think it's about 45. That was last week's numbers. I haven't gotten this week's yet. Um, we constantly are pushing it. What's the hesitancy, especially if they're out I, amongst the, it's the, the public? I think it's the same. I think it's the same. I, I was all around the city yesterday talking to people, ki talking to kids that are hesitant. I think there's been so much misinformation over the last year. I think it's was politicized last mm -hmm. year. I think it's all of that. Uh, but we've lost too many people. Mm -hmm. We've had, I, th I think the number is between 60 and 70 people in the hospital this year from COVID, NYPD members. Right. Not one of those individuals were vaccinated. I think that's the message people need to hear. The vaccines are working. You may get COVID, but you're not getting seriously ill. And, and we want people healthy. And, and we want to move forward. Coming from somebody who had COVID. That's right. Themselves. That's right. Uh, Commissioner Shea, I appreciate you coming yeah. in this Thank morning. Thanks. So it is great to be Good here. Good to see in you person. in person. That's yeah. Right. It's great to see you in person. By the way, I went to a Met game. Oh, stop and I it. just want to say it was a terrible game. <laughs> If I may say so. This is payback. So it's a this good thing payback sitting for the tweet. between you two, right? Yes. <laughs> it's for the, tweet, that you're for the tweet you sent me about yes. saying I'm a Met fan, you know. That's, that's all I just want to say. You just had to take that jab, huh? Commissioner Well Shane. done. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, Mets. Thanks for playing along. We appreciate it. 843.